Welcome to Chat Chow, a weekly online show celebrating the personalities in the food industry. We're in California's wine country, Napa Valley, and we're speaking with Mike Hendry of Hendry Winery. So you guys are a family-owned winery. Can you give us a little background? Our vineyard grows was purchased by my grandparents in, in 1939, so okay. this year we've been uh, farming here for 73 years uh, and it's one of the things that's important to us certainly not many people uh, in Napa can say that everything we have here was mm -hmm. actually planted by 1880 so mm -hmm. some of the first vineyard in Napa was on parts of this property and how big is your vineyard here we have 117 acres and vines okay. um, and we're standing more or less in the middle of that mm -hmm. um, we grow 10 different kinds of grapes here. How many varieties of grapes are there? Well, in theory, an infinite number. Um, there's only ever been one Chardonnay seed, and all of the other Chardonnay vines have come from cuttings from that first one. So there are maybe, to, to make a guess, 20 different varietals that account for 90% of what you see on the shelves, but there are literally thousands of other varietals that, that people cultivate and in theory every seed is a new variety. And what is it about this like Napa climate and whether that makes it so great for growing grapes? Most of the serious wine regions of the world share mm -hmm. some common traits uh, mm -hmm. and they're basically dry summers. Uh, okay. So controlling the water status of the vine is, mm -hmm. is probably the single most important factor in, in fruit quality. Second, uh, what you want is a long, warm growing season. Uh, so in California, we have generally very cool temperatures on the coast, uh, relatively hot temperatures inland, and a very steep gradient in temperature between those locations. Mm -hmm. So average daily highs here in the summer are around 85. The best vineyard sites tend to be ones that, uh, by many other agricultural standards, are not very good soil, so generally you have lean rocky soils mm -hmm. uh, and relatively little water mm -hmm. uh, to produce quality grapes and but if you look at Chile, South Africa, um, parts of Australia they all essentially share those characteristics. So one of the things you guys are known for is kind of doing interactive tours with the people that come here. Can you give us like a little mini tour tell us what goes on with the process of making wine? First and foremost, wine is, a, is an agricultural product and, and we certainly feel that the, the farming and the vineyard side of it uh, is the most important part of what we do. And what we're doing now is starting on pruning and pruning is uh, one of the, certainly one of the most important jobs through the year. So is this, this is the vine and is this like right, these little ones are where the grapes grow off of? They usually form on the lower parts of the, the cane. So this was the stem of a cluster from last year. Okay. Uh, and when we prune the next year, there are many ways to prune a vine, but these are called cordon train and spur prune. So each of these locations is what we call a spur, uh, and we usually have two shoots here. Next year, what we'll do is probably cut the top of the vine off here, uh, and then these buds will produce new shoots that'll start to be the cordons that you see like on these, these other vines. So then it'll, it'll split. So we won't, and, and this is a, a good result for mm -hmm. one year of growing, um, yeah, yeah. but most of this wood will be pruned off. So can you take us through the process really quick from the vine to the glass? Sure. Um, the grapes are first crushed and they, they go into the tank and, and what's happening in there is called the alcoholic fermentation. So yeast are converting sugar to carbon dioxide and alcohol. And, and some other byproducts. Then the wine goes to barrels, and, and the first thing it does when it's in barrels is go through what's called the malolactic fermentation. Uh, and once that process is done, uh, the barrels go into the cellar over here, uh, where we keep them for, as I mentioned, anywhere from, from one to two years. Then when we're ready for bottling, uh, there's a, a process that the wine again goes through, and then it may be stored in bottles and cases for, for another, you know, three months to sometimes a year and a half or so before we release it again. How much can like a winemaker control the flavor of a wine? Once a winemaker starts the process, he's then able to influence 
through picking time, uh, through what kinds of barrels he uses, uh, and through temperatures in the fermentation. Through there, there are a number of ways that a winemaker then starts to influence the style of the wine. So what is kind of a wine trend that's hot right now? The thing that, that springs into my mind first when you say that is, is possibly uh, Albarino. So mm. Albarino is a, a new grape in California. And is that made into a red wine or a white wine? It's a white wine. Uh, okay. Albarino is a, a Spanish varietal. Um, and it's sort of classically made in this, this high acid, dry style. It's an intense, very, very intense, fresh style of, of wine. Okay, so what are we drinking here? This is one of our Zinfandels. Uh, at Hendry, we make 12 different wines usually, uh, mm -hmm. and, and four white wines. Uh, three of those are Zinfandels. Great, and what's the best way to sample this wine? Much of the enjoyment of wine comes from what it smells like. So before I taste a wine, I usually swirl it and coat the sides of the glass, okay. uh, and then smell it first. Well, thank you so much for this interview. Very welcome. And can you do a toast? Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> so have you ever crushed grapes like with your feet? Like in I Love Lucy? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you should do that.